Before the break, we learned from Talbot County Sheriff Joe Gamble just how bad the opioid epidemic is here on Delmarva. But we've got to do more than just talk about it. So it's time to come together and do something because this epidemic affects all of us. In Talbot County, it starts with the color purple. Our friends at Providence State Bank got the ball rolling last week. You may remember staff at Providence State Bank in Easton repre uh, presenting Sheriff Gamble and Lucy Hughes of the Tidewater Rotary $5,000 for the Talbot Goes Purple campaign. Well, we think that it's a very important cause with the um, opioid awareness and for the month of September, Tidewater Rotary Club and Sheriff Gamble's office has, have partnered and asked the community to get involved in opioid awareness. And Providence State Bank thought it was an important cause and we've donated $5,000 to the cause. And I couldn't be happier that we are supporting the event. And as you can tell there, the staff at Providence State Bank is also going purple, if you will, as part of the Talbot Goes Purple campaign. We are happy to announce Delmarva Life's doing the same. Set looks a little bit different now, doesn't it? Looks pretty good, right? <laughs> We're welcoming Sheriff Gamble back to the couches. This is the president of Tidewater Rotary in Easton, Lucy Hughes, also joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thanks for sticking around. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Talbot Goes Purple. Mm -hmm. why, why purple? Well, purple is Chris Heron's color. And Joe tells the story of um, Chris Heron was going. Does everybody know who Chris Heron is? Tell me who we Chris should back is. up. You want to do the Chris Heron story? <laughs> sure. So, Chris Heron is a, was an NBA basketball star for the Boston Celtics. Um, and he is coming to Talbot County. But Chris took the same path to addiction that our kids are taking. He got involved with prescription opiates while he was playing with the Celtics and then became a heroin addict. Um, through that and, and then obviously uh, crashed, got arrested, right. changed his life, got into recovery um, and I saw him on ESPN, watched him on ESPN. Um, they did a half hour show on him and said we, we want to bring that person to Talbot County to talk to our kids. Very engaging speaker. So purple is his color? Purple is his color. So what happened was he was speaking at a high school and there were th uh, four or five little young ladies in the high school with purple shirts and he asked them after the thing, why are you wearing purple? And they said, well, we're the only sober students in our high school. And this is how we show unity. So he started Purple Clubs, um, Project Purple out of that, um, which we're doing and Lucy can talk about the, uh, the Project Purple Clubs that we're doing at our high schools in Talbot County through the through the, this project. So Lucy, yeah. yeah, so the whole month of September, mm -hmm. Talbot Goes Purple and Tidewater Rotary helping kick this all off, but it involves the high schools as well? Absolutely, there are clubs in both the high schools um, in Talbot County, and they'll be there to help give kids, first of all, a safe place to go, be able to have conversations, be able to talk about the issues, and um, faculty members, teachers are working with them too. They're, um, the sports teams have taken, really embraced this at mm -hmm. both of the schools. Tonight we're going back for the um, high school opener at Easton High. Football high. Whole football, football opener. going purple. The entire game is going purple. Um, the ho hockey team, actually the field hockey team, if you drive down 50 right now, Talbot goes purple in purple solo cups on the fence all the way down. So awesome. not only have the clubs embraced this, the athletic teams have embraced this, and it's really given them a platform and an opportunity to have these conversations and a safe place to have the conversations right. also. And, and businesses like Provident going purple as well. Absolutely, the community has been incredible. I think we have just been so blessed by the um, the community embracing this. Um, we were talking earlier, you know, the Dairy Queen is having a purple blizzard. We have a jewelry store downtown that has purple lights, purple jewelry in it. We have um, the um, one of the ice cream stores down in Oxford, uh, purple flavor for the month. Wow. Um, some of the restaurants have purple desserts. Mm -hmm. And it's all really just to get the conversation going and have people saying, what is all this purple and what is it about? So that the real push with this is the educational messages. And, and, and we talk about conversations. We've been having conversations for decades about drinking and driving and about mm -hmm. drugs and things like that, but you're talking about a new conversation. Absolutely, this is a new conversation that we need to have. We need to, we need to t start talking about prescriptions in our medicine cabinet. Um, we, and we're not talking about that. When I give a talk uh, in Talbot County, typically I take a poll and about 10% of the, of the room has had a conversation or admits to having a conversation with their kids about prescription painkillers. 
um, and not just painkillers, Annex and other things kids are abusing regularly, is we need to have that conversation. We're a very medicated society, um, and I don't think the messaging of safety with those medications and proper storage, proper disposal, um, that we've caught up with that. Because it, it didn't happen in our generation when we were young and in high school. There weren't, these medications really weren't there. They weren't mm. available. So it's a whole new conversation that we need to start having. And we need to educate parents. So at the football game tonight, we'll be there with our table, our project, our topic goes purple. And we're going to be educating parents as they come up and saying, hey, did you know? Come to our event, but did you know? Give them our brochure about the facts. Get involved. Go to our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook. Share our 30 educational messages that everybody needs to read, everybody needs to inform their families on if, if we want to turn this epidemic back. New conversation. This isn't just Talbot County, though. No, no. This is, this is a conversation we need to have nationally. Yeah. It, right now in the United States, the CDC just a few months ago announced that, every, that drug overdose deaths are the leading cause of accidental death for everyone under the age of 50 now in the United States. The leading cause of accidental death under 50 for everyone in the United States. And this isn't just affecting young people. This is affecting women from 40 to 55 are one of the fastest growing groups for addiction and overdose rates. Why? Because when we get in our 40s and 50s, we start having more surgeries. We're, we have more access, access. to pain mm -hmm. access to pain medication, and they're even there's we've even they've even proved that legal prescriptions that you take properly, some people are can become addicted to legal prescriptions from right. accidents, back injuries, whatnot. So it's a conversation we need to have. Yes, and we, and we would love to have the conversation, and we're going to have it all through the month of September, mm -hmm. and we're going to have the purple here. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. coming Thank in. You. And all you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And Del Marva will remain purple next week as we support this effort. And we encourage you, too, to go purple. Show us your pictures as we support this cause. You can post them on the Del Marva Life Facebook page or tag us on Instagram. Now, if you'd like to read more about Talbot Goes Purple or to print out promotional material, well, we've got a link for that on our website, delmarvalife.com.